Coach hey, you got to do me a favor first. Okay. You got to tell my man Vance Bedford I said hello. Out, man. Vance shouts you out on every episode. <laughs> He's my every guy, episode. man. Every episode. You're his guy, too. And one of the things Vance talks about a lot is how well coached your, your crew is. You're not going to talk about that, I know you. But you're gonna, you can talk about the unselfishness of your crew. Because he said you, when, whenever you have a team or a line that is willing to sacrifice themselves like these guys are so another guy can make the play. Like on Brayton's sack, for instance. You, one of those guys was basically screening for the other. That's right. One of them was going to get the sack. What about that? I mean, it feels like it's more pronounced in this group. Yeah, I think everybody's bought into Coach Minner's uh, philosophy of do your job and everybody's going to have a chance to eat. You know, and that's that's the biggest thing. If we all execute at the level that we should, there's production out there for everybody. And uh, now when the play comes your way, you got to make the play. Um, but I love the way that we rotate guys in so that we're fresh and then when the opportunity comes, you can you get, you get an opportunity to make that play. You know, tremendous coaching. Vance highlights it all the time. So I'm not going to put you in position to talk about yourself. But I do want you to talk about Coach Mentor because, you know, the way you guys attack protections is elite. It's elite. You're, you're springing guys free on a weekly basis. And I, I just wonder, you know, from a, from a coaching perspective, working with him, your impressions of, of how, how, the, how different his skill is when it comes to that part of the game. Yeah, I do want to give a shout out to Coach Minner because I think he's the best defense coordinator in the country. And I think what makes him the best is the timing of some of his defensive play calls on game day. There's a lot of guys that have a great mind, that have great scheme, that can draw up a great plan, but his ability to dial up a defense when it's needed at the right moment, at the right time, is uncanny. And um, I've never worked with a guy like him that's able to do that. So kudos to him. Um, I think everybody everybody is uh, has their, their footprint on their, their fingerprint on this defense from Coach Klingscales to Jay Harbaugh, um, you know Dylan Roney, all of our guys that are in that room, the minds that are in that room are phenomenal. We work well together. There's an unselfishness there um, that we preach, that Coach Harbaugh preaches, that everybody buys into, and it bleeds right into the football team and players. So, two big defensive stops at the end of the game that I want to talk talk about with, with some of your edge guys. One, Braden McGregor sat. So he, he kind of talked me through it. Talk me through it from a coaching perspective, the, the call up front and how they executed it. Um, I'm trying to remember the, the play you're talking about. It was a sack where he, he got the sack on third down and had to kick a field goal. I can't remember who Braden was rushing with. I can't remember who he was. Let's just skip to the last one then. Let's skip yeah, to the last yeah. play. Where Josiah basically bench presses yeah, what an impressive play by both him and Derek Moore. Uh, the big guys inside, Mason and Kenneth, were, were on a movement to the A-gaps, taking on these big guys, and the B-gaps opened up, and Josiah, who gives up 100-something pounds to the right tackle, absolutely destroys him, knocks him back into um, Milrow, and, uh, and then on the other side, Derek, who, who does a great movement inside and penetrates. And I mean, the quarterback ended up going the other direction when he was on the ground. His, his, his helmet was facing the other end zone. So um, they were just phenomenal play by both those young men. You know, I know you don't, and your team doesn't spend a whole lot of time talking about what people say. But heading into that, that Bama game, people were talking about their defensive line. Yeah. They were talking about, you know, how is Michigan going to slow their rush down? Dallas Turner, tremendous player, but all the talk was about them. And yet you can, you come in that game and you look like you're the best defensive line in the country. And I, I wonder, is that part of the – does it add a chip to the shoulder of your guys or are you just to tune it all out? No, I don't – we don't really talk about that. Maybe the guys think about that. We don't talk about it in the room. Uh, we just want to go out there and put our best performance forward. And, and uh, the guys have a tremendous amount of – uh, of respect for each other and you know we know what we are we know what we can be and, and we just need to go out there and prove it one more time how about mason because he was uh, he was phenomenal like he didn't show up in the stat column we talked about after the game like that dude was a beast and i saw him i saw him kind of limping a little bit between plays and then you wouldn't know it when the ball was snapped because he was a fire-breathing dragon. So what about that guy? Yeah, Mason, Mason's phenomenal. Uh, smart football player, instinctive, can fight through um, 
the pains, the, the bumps, the bruises. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can't say enough positive things about Mason. And uh, he needs to have another big one this week. Speaking of this week, you're facing a Joe Moore award winning line, which is not a foreign concept to this team, facing it in practice, right? right? But this is a squad, explosive offense, gets rid of the ball quickly. That's right. Is there, is there a, an offense that you've seen that is similar, that you can key on, kind of describe to break them down for us? Well, no, I mean, I wouldn't say anybody that we've played this year is, is that similar to them. Um, you know, they've only been sacked 11 times the whole season, so they have a really good offensive line, as you stated. They have a great quarterback that has great pocket awareness and presence. They do not make it easy to get pressure on their quarterback. Uh, we do need to affect them. We may not get the production that we had last week in terms of the amount of sacks, but if we can impact the game by you know, getting the ball out just a little quicker, making him uncomfortable, uh, we do need to get him on the ground at times, um, but we need to impact this quarterback and, and make it very tough on him. Yeah, and I was, that, you segue perfectly into what I was going to ask. When you face a team that can, you know, they can hold it some, but they get rid of it quickly a lot, does it change your approach any at all when uh, a team is, they might one step, one step and throw it? Two seconds and the ball is out. Does it change what you do in it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It changes a lot. Um, but just like last week with Jalen Milrow, uh, Michael Penix can, can move and, and scramble and get out of the pocket as well as anybody. So there, there's a great challenge there, too. So you can't go crazy to, to try to create the pressure that you want. you got to make sure you're disciplined in your rush lanes. And listen, he's a great player. He's going to get out at times. He's rushing four guys. They have six blockers. There's gaps in there that, that are tough to to manage, um, but you know, we got to make him feel uncomfortable when, when we do. Mike Kelsey, appreciate your time, man. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. All right.